Uh, hello, uh, my name is Chris, and I'm actually from Arkansas, and just came out here for the summer to work with this awesome group of young people. Um, and it's really been a blessing for me. I've enjoyed the last three weeks immensely. And I found a lesson in these young people um, that made me really start thinking about what we're doing with our spiritual lives, our spiritual journey. Uh, our first week, we basically, as soon as these kids arrived, told them to pack up backpacks because uh, we were going to go out for a week in the wilderness. And everyone's got a varying degree of outdoorsiness in them. Um, some people had never lifted a backpack onto their back before ever, and other people were like, oh, I do this all the time. Um, and so it was interesting that first day, telling a group of kids to hike four miles into this unknown destination um, with varying packs of sizes and strange contraptions attached to them. Um, and it left a lot of spiritual lessons to be learned. Um, but the main one I found was when we were hiking in, we'd start kind of separating a little bit. Our group would get separated. Um, and we'd end up some hiking faster than others, and so we'd have to stop and take breaks. Uh, we'd, we'd rest for a little while, let everyone group back up, eat some trail mix or something, um, pass the time talking, swatting mosquitoes, all of that joy, joyous stuff. Until the very end of the trail, we started off a little bit late, and it got dark before we finished. And so we reached one of our final trailheads, or our, one of our tr final splits in the trail, and we got the whole group together, and we were like, hey guys, like, you know, we need to stick together now. Um, for one, we didn't really have that much light. Uh, not many of us had flashlights or headlamps or anything. Um, and then also just we wanted the group to stay together as a staff for safety too. Um, and we pushed onwards with this group all trying to stick together, everyone having to communicate with each other, hey, like, I'm here, like, or like, hey, slow down a little bit. Um, and we kept them all together uh, until we walked out to this opening finally, and it was where we were going to camp for the night. And we told the kids, hey, you guys can drop your packs now. And like, let me tell you, like, when you tell like, a group of teenagers to drop their packs after that, like, you get literal dropping of packs. They just like, undo the straps and just whoop, poof, down on the rocks, never to be picked up again. Like, they don't want to touch them. Um, so don't tell them that until you get to the final place, because it's hard to get them to pick them back up again. Um, but then we took them out, uh, out, into these, out onto this rocky opening area that overlooked the lake that we were going to camp next to. And we just told them to hang out, sit down for a little bit, and then just look up at the sky. Uh, and for a lot of us, it was some of the most beautiful stars we'd ever seen. Um, we just spent a moment all just kind of sitting there. We would, we would point out constellations and some planets that we could see, and then we'd joke and be like, look, a shooting star, and then everyone was like, oh, really loud, that's so cool, and we're like, no, it's an airplane. They're like, aww. <laughs> but then we'd see some actual shooting stars, and so it got pretty impressive. Um, and it got me thinking, like, for the students that we had, uh, they didn't know that at the end of this trip there was going to be this beautiful stargazing opportunity, this gorgeous thing to go look at. Um, but in our spiritual journeys, it's a lot like our, tra or a lot like our hike that we took. Um, sometimes we get a little spread out. Uh, sometimes everyone's going a different pace. But towards the end of the hike, towards the end of our spiritual journeys, my hope is that we start grouping back together. Um, we're going to need each other towards the end. And the glorious thing about it is that for the kids, they didn't know what was going to be at the end, um, but we do. Uh, God tells us about heaven. He tells us about his promises, about what he's, what he's prepared for us. And so to lose hope now, to lose courage now for us is just, it's disappointing me. Like, I know I get discouraged, and I have to go through and I have to remind myself again what it exactly it is that we're working towards, that we're, that we're working for, and about the God that loves us. Um, so just like our kids out on the trail with stars to look forward to, um, keep your eyes focused on heaven. Uh, that's our end goal. Uh, each summer during Teen Bible Academy, uh, the students have opportunities to share testimonies during our worship times. And that's come to be, uh, become one of my favorite parts of TBA. And uh, this morning, you'll, you'll be able to hear just a snapshot of some of those testimonies. And so uh, right now, some of our students are going to come forward. And uh, they'll be sharing with you, after which uh, we'll be doing a special, special uh, song for you.
Hi, uh, happy Sabbath. My name is Haley Kang, and I'm from the Santa Maria Korean SDA Church. Um, I've been a swimmer for a long time, <laughs> since I was six years old, and I really love the sport. Um, swimming helps me relieve stress, and um, I don't know if any of you play a sport, but it's rewarding when you see the results after you've so worked so hard and trained every day. Um, at my church, um, it was a few years ago, we had a period of time where um, there was a few difficulties. We went through a few pastors, and my youth pastor decided to not lead the youth group anymore. And a lot of the youth ended up leaving because they had college or, um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, because of that, I ended up swimming on Saturdays and not going to church. But swimming on Saturday had benefits. I got faster, and I had like a stronger bond with my teammates. But my bond with God got weaker, and it was almost gone, actually. I didn't really talk to him or anything. And um, it was freshman year, and my mom asked me whether I thought keeping the Sabbath was more important than swimming or if I treasured swimming more. And my parents gave me the choice to make by myself. And it took me a while because I really liked swimming. And it, it became a priority in my life because I sort of didn't, I sort of stopped thinking that church was so important and that God was important. But some of you might know what that feels like when Satan tries to keep you away from God with work or sports or relationships and other things. But in the Bible, um, John 14, 15, it says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And ever since that experience, um, I chose to follow God and I stopped swimming on Saturdays and going to meets. And um, I came to TBA to grow closer to him and have a relationship. And I encourage all of you to put God as top priority because he's the one who does the same for you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mark. Mm. <laughs> uh, I, I had a, a really special relationship with my great-grandmother. Uh, she would always be there for me throughout my childhood. And yeah, I, I was really close to her. Uh, one Sabbath morning, my older sister was driving the family to church, and on our way to church, we got into a terrible crash. Um, the crash had left my mother with uh, pretty bad breathing problems. Her chest was pretty hurt from the crash. And um, my great-grandmother, she, uh, she had it the worst, though. Um, she was in the hospital for about two weeks, and after being hospitalized for two weeks, she passed away. Um, this uh, completely uh, really impacted me. I, I was deeply depressed because she was so close to me, and so I didn't know how to react with that. Um, no matter how bad things may seem, Christ can turn it for the better if you let him. <clears throat> Romans 8.28 says, And we know all things work together for good if... Uh, yeah, wait. And we know all things work together for good to those who love God. Sorry. Um, the accident had given courage um, to me to share my faith with a good friend of mine, Austin O'Neill. And um, if you're currently going through um, tough times, maybe you too have lost a loved one, uh, I encourage you to let Jesus turn your sorrow into joy and it will really turn your life for the better. And uh, my, my older sister, Jasmine, she, she was um, really, she changed after it for like for the better. She gave her life to God and she was baptized. And you know, she, she's kind of like a role model for me. <laughs> she's, a, she's like an inspiration. <laughs> and yeah. Um, and so I started, I, I started like um, trying to look on the positive side of things. And yeah, it, it really worked better for me. So I started feeling called to be a youth pastor. And yeah. That's it. Hello, my name is Austin O'Neill. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Um, 
I know what it's like to be bullied, to bully, and uh, feel depressed. When I was about nine years old, when I was about nine years old, <laughs> I started to really mess up. I was fighting and smoking marijuana. Um, around the same time, my friends and I started a gang. When I was around 11, my grandfather passed away and that made everything worse. I thought his death was my fault, which led me even further down the path I was on. Some of you may know what it's like to have everything in your life come crumbling down. Maybe someone you care about is going through a difficult time. During some of your most difficult moments, God is able to work some of the most amazing miracles. Even though I was doing all these terrible things, um, somehow I was still doing well in school. I was ahead in my high school credits, but high school was really depressing for me. It got so bad, I considered ending my life. But then God placed a guy named Mark, and everything changed. Um, I started going to his house where I learned about the Sabbath, and I started going to church with his family. Mark's sister, Jasmine, um, had recently been in a terrible accident, which somehow led her to grow in a relationship with God. Her new and real passion for Christ inspired me to want the same thing. Um, so far, TBA has had a huge impact on my life. I am praying about God's plans for my future, and I'm beginning to feel that he is calling me to be a youth pastor so I can spread his word and worship his holy name. So today, I encourage you to fight for your relationship with God. Just before we, uh, we hear the special music as they get ready, through some of our most difficult moments, God is able to reveal himself as the healer, as, as a mighty God. And we've heard just how this young person named Jasmine was able to impact so many lives. There are many other people who were impacted by uh, the, the, the experience that Jasmine had, and she's actually here with us today. And I'd like to invite Jasmine to come forward. <laughs> you know, I, I had the privilege of meeting this young lady about a year ago, and I saw just how God had been working in her life, and she's actually inspired me in, in my journey as well. Uh, last summer, right here at Teen Bible Academy, Jasmine shared her testimony. And it's a beautiful thing to see how the Lord is working, and now her brother, along with his friend Austin, is sharing their story. And uh, I just want Jasmine to share just really quickly what God has been doing with her summer. Um, as we've done TVA, she's been doing something else. And after Jasmine shares, we'll hear special music. Okay. Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Jasmine. Um, currently, I'm in Youth Rush. This is kind of like a little break, but it's where we go door to door, like selling like, Christian literature. Um, Brenda was with me, and I remember knocking on this door, and like this guy who's like, I'm Catholic, I know all the answers, and he slammed the door on me. And I was like, oh man, so it got me in like a really bad mood. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna pray. And I remember just stopping there and like praying, okay, God, like I'm so confused, like why am I here? Like, no one's interested. Everyone has all the answers. Like, I felt like I was in Laodicea. And so I just remember praying to God. And then the next door I go to, it was like this Assyrian woman. And she's like, I'm very sick. Can you pray with me? I was like, whoa. So I pray with her. And then as I continue going, just a lot of discouragement kept happening. And I prayed again. I was like, okay, God, just send me to someone that needs, like, these books. And I'm at this door, and it's this young guy. And he's like really wishy-washy. I'm like, okay, yeah, this, this DVD's awesome. He's like, oh, okay. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. It will change your life. And I just start telling him about, like, how this DVD will give him answers to, like, if God is good, why is there pain and suffering? And then another one, like, um, how can we even trust the Bible? And it goes over the book of Daniel. And then he was like, you know what? It's crazy. Um, my parents are at church right now, and they kept asking me, can, I, um, can you come with us to church? And I said, no. He was like, so I just prayed, and I was like, God, if you want me to be yours, then send someone. And I think you're that sign. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know, because originally I was just going to go. I was just going to be like, okay, fine, you don't want these DVDs, I'm going to go. But, like, the Holy Spirit kept telling me, like, show him these, show him these. And in the end, he ended up getting them and, like, 
signing up for Bible studies. So it was like, so yeah, it was just awesome to see how God was like answering my prayers, even when I was like so, so mad and like discouraged. And then, um, yeah, recently I got accepted to go to Souls West. So that's the next step in life. So yeah, so it's just awesome to see how God is like continuing like setting me up like new places. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Jasmine. Uh, In your moments of difficulty, pray this prayer, Lord, I need you, and he'll show up. Sabbath, everyone. Um, my name is Casey Miranda, and this is my sister. I'm Kendra Miranda. <laughs> um, and um, we just want to share with you um, a little part of a, our life, our testimony. Um, so it starts off even before we were born. Uh, my parents who are sitting right there. Um, they had a hard time having kids for like I think four years. almost four years. Uh, they couldn't have kids, and. They, they desperately, like, they wanted kids for a while, and my mom was close to starting treatment, but they decided to first go to um, a prayer group that they invited us at our church in L.A. Well, they invited them. Though. Well, they invited them, not us. Yeah, not us, not, not that time. And so, <laughs> <laughs> and so um, we, they started going, and they started praying every single morning. They'd go and pray. Uh, I think it lasted for about an hour. And a month later, um, after, a month after they started going to these, uh, this prayer uh, meeting, my mom found out she was pregnant. And she, the doctor told her she was, I think, two weeks pregnant. And so, I mean, everyone was super excited because, I mean, it had taken some time for them to, um, to have children. And so we, we realized that, well, they realized that, um, <laughs> <laughs> what, what they couldn't do in four years, God did in two weeks. 
And so that's the story of how my sister and I came to this world, I guess you could say. Um, and so, yeah, I kind of have something to add. I guess um, throughout our life, we had been told this story over and over again. Like, you guys, we prayed for you guys to be born. But I guess as smaller children, um, we didn't really understand it. Like, we heard it so many times, but we didn't really pay attention to it. Like, oh, yeah, they prayed for us and stuff. It wasn't until um, we lived in L.A. for seven years, and we moved here in 2007 in Fresno. And so it wasn't until we visited last summer, around this time, that we had finally seen everybody again, and all the church members came, and they, like, they came to say hi to us. So you guys, they used to say, you guys are ours. You guys are literally, you belong to every member here in this church because we, we all prayed for you guys. And we were like, what? It had been a while since we had heard this story. And so they tell us the story again, and this time my sister and I really come to notice, like, it actually hit us. Like, we had been... We had been miracle babies, and um, it hit us, and they took us to the prayer room where they had prayed for us, and my sister and I, we were with my dad, and we just, we just started crying a lot, and we realized that summer, like, you know, God gave us this chance to come into this world, and we really wanted to give something back to him, and so um, now my freshman year, and our freshman year in high school, we attended Clovis North. Um, we didn't want to go there. Honestly, it's an amazing school, really good in education. But my sister and I didn't feel comfortable there. And we told our parents, guys, we want to go to Singer High. We want to go to Singer High. We had been raised in, a, in Fresno with all those children that were going to Singer High. And we're like, please, you guys are torturing us. You guys are like the worst parents ever for not letting us go to Singer High. And they stood firm in their decision. And... <laughs> And so it went on for like six months, and we, we still, we weren't happy, like we made a lot of friends. My sister and I are really good at making friends. Um, and so um, we made friends, and we actually made some lifelong friends, and we had one of a good friends of ours um, that we've been with since third grade, and he would always encourage us. And um, so it came, I, we're not sure exactly how it came to be that our parents finally decided to give it a try to go to Singer High. So this, our sophomore year that we just passed by, we were transferred into Sanger High, and it's awesome how everything just fell in its place. Like, we were, like, it was late to go into school already, and it's like, okay, like, God had provided, like, that, those few weeks that we had left before entering school, he provided for us to go to Sanger High. And so our friend before leaving from Clovis North, he told us, you guys, wherever you guys go, that will be your mission field. I believe that God is going to work great things in you guys. And that stuck with us when we went to Sanger High. And so while we were in a class fifth period, yeah. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> in uh, one of our, uh, our fifth period class, we had a friend, his name was David, and um, he seemed really outgoing when we first met him, but then one day we were in class and our teacher was just, was, he wasn't doing anything, so he pulled out his Bible and we started talking about the Bible, and I was just so amazed because this guy in public school brought out his Bible, and he knew we were Christian, and he's Christian too, and I, that just stuck with us. And then during an award ceremony that we were at, uh, they were announcing what everyone wanted to do in their future. And he said he wanted to be a pastor. An ordained pastor. An ordained pastor, yeah. So I was like, wow, this guy, he's so cool. Like, I mean, to be able to share his faith. Um, and we started becoming friends during our fifth period. We would just talk about God. And there were a lot of kids in our class who were interested uh, in reading the Bible with us. And so, yeah, they had a lot of questions. And so... One day, I was talking to him, and I said, hey, how about we do a small little Bible study for those of us who have some questions here? Why don't we do it in this classroom? So we asked the teacher in that class, and he was a little hesitant. He was like, yeah, sure, okay. He didn't really think it was going to be a Bible study. And so the following Wednesday, we had eight kids show up to the Bible study. And uh, he gave the first, um, the first uh, Bible study, and um, surprisingly, it was about ants, too. Um, but it just started growing from there, and um, <laughs> just recently, um, Pastor Maurice came to our school to give the Bible study, and it came up to be 65 students in one classroom, and we were just amazed how in just seven months, it had grown from eight students attending to 65 students in one classroom, and we were like, God is so good. And it's been a blessing for us because I think it's been the greatest blessing for us because we told ourselves, you know, as leaders, we're leading this Bible study. We need to be great. Well, we need to have a spiritual relationship with Christ. And so we started reading our Bibles. We would, I mean, us, it's amazing to be twins because I push her and she push, pushes me. We motivate each other. And so we'd start reading our Bibles no matter how late it got. You know, we have a, we are very busy. We have 
school and there's a lot of things that come along with that. And so even if it was like 11 at night, sometimes even midnight, we'd be like, oh, we have to read, we have to read, even if it was something small. And God always provided an amazing Bible verse for us. And um, it's just been great. And so if you guys could um, open your Bibles to Romans 10, 13, um, through 15 and 17 through 18, it says, yeah, Romans 10, 13. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scripture says, How beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. So faith comes from hearing, that is hearing the good news about Christ. But I ask, have the people of Israel actually heard the message? And, um... It's true, guys. There's a lot of people out there who do not know about God. And our message to you guys, we encourage you guys to just go out in faith and just step out for Christ. Take a stand and just share his love and his word and the good news. Just don't be ashamed. When you start to really show your faith about Christ, he blesses you so much more. And that doesn't mean you have to know so much. My sister and I, it's been a revolutionary year for us. So many things have come our way this year. It's been difficult, but it's been amazing. I mean, God has given us an amazing journey this year. And we've just been shown how much God can really work in our lives. So we highly encourage you guys to just, with anybody, you can be young or older. It doesn't matter. It's just about speaking the word of God. So, yeah. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Uh, I just added on this uh, last minute. I was feeling impressed to share with you guys uh, my testimony. Um, my name is Enoch Tyrone, and <laughs> I, um, I was originally born in the city of Brockton, Massachusetts, about half an hour south of Boston. And uh, basic, um, But this story starts a little bit before then. Uh, my dad, who is with here with me right now, He's from the beautiful island of Puerto Rico, and uh, my mom is from the little country of Ecuador. Yeah, sorry. <clears throat> and so um, my parents met in high school and around the 97, 98, 97, and uh, they went in high school together, and they became uh, really close friends, and they became best friends. And uh, thankfully, uh, you know, things happened, and... I was born. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I was born, and uh, it, um, it was really hard for my parents at first because uh, my dad wasn't able to go to college. My he had to work. Uh, he had three jobs for a while, and uh, my mom thankfully was she was able to go to college and she was able to study and uh, get her degree, and so. Um, uh, after a few years like living like that, um, my dad, he started working at Telemundo, and uh, that was, uh, I'm pretty sure that was a pretty big blessing for him, because he got to uh, explore in the area that he really wanted to work in, which was media and television. And so uh, when I was around five years old, four or five years old, uh, my parents were watching, uh, started watching 3ABN. And uh, my, my dad, you know, he, he always wanted to work in the Christian uh, media. And uh, so he sent his resume to 3ABN. But, you know, he just thought, you know, maybe they, they wouldn't answer. You know, it's just, just to try it out, just, just to see if anything would happen. And so about a year, a year later, uh, 3ABN, they, they called him up and they said, you know, hey, you know, we... We see that you sent your resume, you know, do you want to come and work for us? And so my dad was really excited. Uh, so um, he saved up money and uh, he went to visit 3ABN. But the job that they were offering him wasn't really the job that he wanted to do. Uh, it was uh, programming, programming, I believe. And uh, he wanted to be an editor, you know, that's what he, his passion was. And it still is his passion. And so. Um, He's a little disappointed, you know, um, but he said, if this is God's will, then let it be, you know. And uh, 
he came back to Illinois, I mean, to Massachusetts, and he started praying. Him and my mom, my mom was really excited for my dad, and so um, he started praying together if it would be God's will for them, for us to go to 3ABN. And so uh, a little bit, a little, some time passed, and they called my dad up again, and they said, uh, we have some good news and some bad news. And my dad said, what are the bad news? And the bad news is that the position we offered you has already like been taken. And so I was like, oh, okay, well, what's the good news? The good news is that the, we have a position for you which is editing. And then my dad was just like, you know, he was really excited because that's the position he wanted to work at 3ABN. And so he could just, we could just see like God was putting all these miracles in, in our lives. And um, around this time, I was starting to go to public school. Uh, I was really, you know, I was kind of like a really immature little kid, you know. Uh, sometimes I'd get into trouble, and uh, I would just, I would make, I remember I'd always make the teachers upset. And, um, you know, so, uh, yeah, I was just that type of little kid. And uh, I remember uh, we started, like, packing up and everything to move to Illinois. And... I was like, you know, like, I was confused about like everything was happening because like, I was thinking like, we're moving, you know, there's a world outside of Massachusetts. I didn't know that. And so um, basically, you know, I was kind of sad, you know, I was leaving my grandma. My grandma was really, I was really close to my grandma. And uh, uh, it was around 2006. And uh, we, we tried to sell our house in Massachusetts. We used to live in this really old house right next to the beach in Massachusetts. It was really nice, um, but uh, we tried to sell it and the house wouldn't sell. And then, so we ended up losing the house. And um, yeah, that was really disappointing for us. And so, but we took a leap of faith and you said, we said, you know what? We're just gonna go out and see what God does for us. And uh, we left Illinois around October 2006. I mean, we left Massachusetts around October 2006. and we drove to all the way to Illinois, and we had just enough amount of money to get by that trip. You know, right when we got to Illinois, like we barely had any money at all until my dad got his first paycheck from 3ABN. And so uh, I started going to Adventist Academy for the first time. I was in first grade, and I would also, you know, I would get into even more trouble because I had just come from a public school, and so I would you know, mess around and make the teachers upset and everything. And just, uh, I'd always pick on some friends of mine. And um, for a while, you know, I didn't really have a lot of close friends. And so that kind of like got me down um, because, you know, I think, I was thinking, you know, I'm such a mean person, you know, nobody really wants to be my friend. And so um, I started kind of slowly closing and closing in myself, you know, becoming quieter and quieter. And um, it became harder for me to make friends. And it was like that for until like fifth grade. I started, people not started noticing at my school that I was becoming quieter and just sitting around the gym, you know, not really playing with anyone. So they started approaching me more and I started slowly making new friends and um, uh, things started getting better. Uh, I was, you know, like, hap started getting excited, you know. Uh, things are, like, starting to get better. I'm making new friends and everything. And time passed by, and uh, I believe it was around fifth, at the end of, of fifth grade, um, my dad, uh, he was uh, working at 3ABN, and uh, he was carrying this big, heavy 14-pound camera on his shoulder. And what that did is that ended up messing with his uh, spine, his discs on his upper spine, and it ended up being that uh, a disc was pinching his nerve, and it was like he was like getting tingly on his fingers and everything, and uh, he started visiting the doctor, and uh, they told him that if you don't get surgery soon, you know, this could, the disc could completely crush the nerve, and you can end up paralyzed for the rest of your life, and so. Uh, my dad, you know, he kept on visiting doctors and uh, everything, and they said that for the surgery to work, they would have to fuse the discs. But that would do basically what that would do is he would use lose fifty percent of his mobility of his neck, 
So he wouldn't be able, like, he would be able to look side to side, but he wouldn't be able to look down and up. And so um, my dad was really scared, you know, and um, it was a hassle, you know, trying to find the right doctor. And we just started praying and asking God, you know, to do a miracle for us. And um, basically he lived like that for about two and a half years with that pain in his neck. And it started getting t to his legs and his hands. And he couldn't lift anything heavy. I remember just my dad, one day we were at Walmart, and it was just a bag, uh, I think it was like two liter bottle of soda. And he, said, he asked me, Enoch, can you please carry this for me? I'm, I'm losing my strength. I remember how sad I was seeing my own dad in pain. Sorry. Um. <laughs> Sorry. Um. And even though he was on all that pain, he would still go around the house and do all the things in the house, and he would still work for us. Uh, he would still work around and do whatever he could to help us and maintain our family together. And it reminded me of how much God loves us, and even though he had suffered through so much pain, he still loved us, and he would do anything for us to be happy. And I really saw the love of God in my dad, in spite of his pain for two and a half years. And um, uh, uh, around uh, 2012, um, my dad um, finally found a, a, a surgeon that told him, you know, I won't have, I won't operate you unless I know that I have to. And so he looked at an MRI uh, of my dad's discs, and they saw that, um, he said, um, you know, we don't have to fuse your discs. Um, we can just do one disc replacement, and that way you don't have to lose 50% of your mobility of your neck. And so uh, God had really answered our prayers, and after a month, after seeing the doctor, um, my dad had surgery, and um, they said it would take him a year to recover, at least a year to recover from the surgery, but after about three or four weeks, my dad was pretty much, you know, almost all of the pain was gone, and uh, I remember just seeing um, the smile on his face, you know, I saw, like, happiness, and uh, I really thank God for those two and a half years were really, really hard for our family. And uh, especially for my dad, I know that he suffered through a lot. And uh, uh, around the time, uh, I was in seventh grade, I was just finishing up seventh grade. Uh, by then I had, <coughs> I'm sorry, by then I had made a, a lot of friends. And uh, I, when I had finished seventh grade, it was the summer, and uh, uh, my dad, I remember one day we were driving in the van, and my dad, was right next to me, and he said, Enoch, you know, I have something to tell you, but you can't tell anyone yet because it's not official. I'm like, what? And he's like, well, we might go, we might move to Fresno, California. And I was just thinking in my mind, you know, mixed emotions, you know, like, oh, I was really excited because, you know, I had a lot, heard a lot about California. And uh, it's just kind of excited, you know, all these amazing places you could visit. And, but at the same time, I was sad. You know, I didn't want to leave Illinois uh, you know, I had made so much, so many friends that had become like family, and um, so uh, we ended up praying. And at first, it was like a maybe, you know, maybe we might move, maybe not. But as time went on, it was we could see that uh, we were very likely to move. And um, on our, in August of 2013, uh, we packed up everything and we we left. Uh, Illinois, and it was a two-day drive to arrive here in Fresno. And I still remember the first day, we, the first night we got here. It was um, I looked around I'm like, wow, everything looks so dead. You know, nothing's green or anything. I don't think this is like a desert or something. And uh, uh, but uh, 
I started going to uh, Fresno Adventist Academy my eighth grade year. And uh, at first, you know, I was kind of shy. You know, I'm, I'm always shy, but uh, I was really quiet at first. And I just, I kind of wanted to stay to myself because, you know, I was kind of upset, you know, God, you know, why did you bring me all the way over here? I was really comfortable for where I was living, you know? And uh, as time went by, my friends were really accepting and they really, really loved having me there. And I started getting close to my eighth grade class and um, I ended up being happy where I was. And uh, eighth grade year was really a blessing. I got really close and I made a lot of new friends here pretty quickly. And uh, when I finished my eighth grade year, um, yeah, I finished my eighth grade year and I had a, an amazing summer. And uh, when my freshman year started, uh, I was kind of excited because, you know, it was high school and I was really excited for high school. And uh, I met, uh, around this time, I met this amazing person who's been an amazing blessing in my life. Uh, she really, her name's Leslie Lopez, and she's like been just there for me whenever I felt down and uh, when I was like nervous, you know, tell my parents something, you know, I'd always tell her and ask her like to pray for me, you know, to have this going on in my life and everything. And uh, she was like the only person that I felt comfortable with, you know, approaching her and asking her, would you please pray for me? And she wouldn't just go home and pray. Uh, she wouldn't just go home and pray for me that night or anything. She would just stop what she was doing and she would just pray with me like right there in front of everyone in the middle of the school hallway. I'm like, wow, I'm like, nobody else did that for me. And uh, uh, things started getting really stressful freshman year. Uh, I started, uh, you know, just stressful things and I, I barely got any sleep, you know. I, I noticed like I started getting sleep deprived and I would come to school and fall asleep in my classes and for a while, I was scared because some of my grades dropped, and I felt like really upset at myself. And uh, you know, just having like a low self-esteem. And uh, around the time of December of last year, I remember um, we had a syringes in my house, and it was the time around the time where I was feeling like really low of myself. And I took a syringe and um, I started cutting myself. And um, I remember uh, just feeling so lonely. And I didn't really want to tell my parents at all because I was scared of what they would say. And I just remember, you know, just thinking, like, why, why God? Why is everything happening to me? You know, all of this stress and everything, school. And um, around this time uh, last year, I went to this event called Prayer Conference where I, I really felt like really connected to God and that was honestly like the biggest blessing in my life going to that uh, prayer conference and it's where I had been baptized since I was 12 years old but when I went to prayer conference like that's where I actually felt a bond with God and uh, I felt like I was finally letting him in my life and um, I started getting closer and reading my Bible more and uh, freshman year went on. Uh, there were a lot of ups and downs throughout the year. And I remember it was this really stressful, stressful week. Uh, my school was having a revival series, and I was in charge. I, I had like to do a lot of favors, and I noticed that I kept on failing and just like leaving my stuff behind, like forgetting things. Like I would just forget my backpack at school, forget all my homework and everything. And I barely got any sleep, just a lot of stress. And I remember uh, one night I just felt like, you know what, maybe it wouldn't be so bad if I just wouldn't be alive right now. And I remember uh, I was in my room by myself and uh, I made myself pass out, you know, thinking that maybe if I did it, you know, maybe I'd never wake up again. And uh, I remember I did it the first time and then you know, I was kind of surprised that it actually worked. And um, so I did it again, and I wanted to do it, like, harder, you know, more intense to see if I would just never wake up again. 
And I remember the second time I did it, I woke up yelling and screaming. My parents came into my room. They ran into my room, asked me, like, what happened? And at first they thought I was playing around, but when they saw that I started crying, they realized that something really did happen. And I remember just the look on their faces when they saw that I had basically just wanted to end my life and wanted made myself pass out. And I got like this really bad bump on my head. And uh, I was really lucky because I almost hit myself on the edge of my drawer. It was like this close from hitting it. And uh, uh, my parents prayed for me. And I remember the way my mom reacted. It, uh, she like, wow, she just felt so bad and started crying. And uh, that night was really, you know, something uh, really showed me that if I would have ended myself right then and there, my parents would have suffered a lot. And um, life continued, like, things got slowly better towards the end of my freshman year. Uh, I remember uh, I was w w having this argument with my dad, and it was really bad. And um, I remember I got really mad at myself because I was thinking, you know, why am I bringing so much pain to my family? And I remember that night um, I cut myself again, and uh, I was going to use my scissors, but uh, I just didn't want to make it noticeable, and so I just used the syringe again. And um, I remember that night, I was really scared because I had stabbed the syringe right into my vein. And it started bleeding internally. I could see it, just a bruise forming. And I realized that I was probably you know, bleeding internally. And uh, I was really scared. I didn't tell anyone for um, a while. And after a few days, the, I saw that it went away. You know, it probably healed and everything. And, um, just a few weeks before TBA, I, I confessed to my dad what I had done. And um, he took it way better than I thought. You know, I was expecting, you know, just this sermon. Uh, <laughs> you know, because I, I had heard, like, a lot of parents are that way, you know, just preach to their kids not to do things like that. But my dad took it very, very well. Um, he understood me. Um, he went through depression as well. He lost his dad when he was 15 years old. So he understood what it means to be depressed. And uh, I remember that Sabbath, my mom got up in front of everyone in church, and she started crying in front of everyone. And she asked if everyone could just please pray for me. And when I saw her cry in front of everyone for me, I realized, like, wow, I had really brought you know, a lot of pain to my family. And I didn't want to do that anymore. And so. Um, TBA has honestly really blessed me and made me realize that I have a lot of value. You know, every each and every one of us have a lot of value. You know, we were all made for um, a purpose. And there's this verse I want to share with you. Um, I'm pretty sure you all know it. Uh, but this this is this is basically, you know, I felt like when I moved to California, and also when I moved to Illinois, I was thinking like, God, why did you bring us here? You know, I was just like really confused. And when I, uh, when all these bad things were happening, I would ask this question. And this verse really helps me. Um, this, if you, you, probably, you guys probably know it, but if you want to turn to your Bibles, uh, Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. And it says this Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid or dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And basically, I read that verse, you know, whenever I feel lonely and I feel like basically there is no purpose in my life. And right here it says, you know, do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And that really speaks to me a lot. And I hope it really speaks to each and every one of you. And... Uh, so now I'm here at TVA, and it's been a really big blessing. Uh, I know that uh, I have a lot of things to work on myself, and I can't do it alone. I can only do it with God's help. And uh, I'm really thankful for my dad. I'm really thankful for my mom as well. She's not here. She's at the GC right now. But I know if she were 
he or she would probably be crying a lot. <laughs> but uh, I really miss my mom. <laughs> and uh, just uh, please keep in your prayers my family and me and every one of us here that we're all going through the spiritual journey and we're all waiting for God's second coming. And uh, um, yeah, basically, um, thank you. We have such precious young people, amen? Amen. 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 You know, when you have the opportunity to put your arms around a young person and let them know how much you appreciate them, whether they're a part of your church or not, maybe the kid next door riding his bike in an area that he shouldn't ride his bike, you know, whatever it is, um, if you have an opportunity to put your arms around a young person, do so. Uh, It might mean the world to them. I feel like we could just pack up and go home right now. (laughs) We're going to close with uh, our young people appealing to us uh, to completely give our lives to Christ. And before we do so, there's a quote that's dear to my heart. It says, we have an army of youth today who can do much if they're properly, properly directed and encouraged. We want our children to believe the truth. We want them to be blessed of God. We want them to act a part in well-organized plans for helping other youth. Let all be so trained that they might rightly represent the truth, giving the reason of the hope that is within them and honoring God in any branch of the work where they are qualified to labor. Youthful talent, well-organized, well-trained is needed in our churches. Amen? Amen? The youth will do something with their overflowing energies. Unless these energies are directed, directed into right channels, they will be used by youth in a way that will hurt their own spirituality and prove an injury to those with whom they associate. Um, praise the Lord for the, the blessing of the young people we have here in Central California Conference. Um, And a dedication of people like yourselves and others who help to make these programs possible goes way beyond anything we could ever imagine. The struggles that our young people go through go way beyond anything we could ever imagine. Uh, But maybe for some of us here, we know what it's like to go through some of these experiences. As our young people shared, I thought about the the amazing way that God intertwines and connects our lives in ways that we will never understand until we step foot in heaven. You know, Jasmine's family actually came to learn about the Sabbath by watching 3ABN. So there's a family somewhere across the globe who's feeling called to this ministry, praise, and they're led to work for this ministry. And as God is working in that family's life, There's another family right here in California who's being blessed by what God is doing over at 3ABN. And down the street, there's a young man named Austin who God is just waiting to see the way that Jasmine's family would interact with Austin. And you know what? The story doesn't end there. Amen? Amen. God is using and desires to use each and every one of us in his grand plan uh, to bring as many people as possible to heaven. You know, during TBA, we looked at a verse that says there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And typically we think, oh man, like that's a scary verse, like it's talking about hell. But if you read the very next part of that verse, it says there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when those who are lost looks into the new Jerusalem coming down and they recognize Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. You know, one of the things that causes the greatest pain to the heart of those who are lost is when they recognize what they've missed out on. One of the things that will cause the greatest pain to the heart of those who are lost at the end is when they look into the city and they recognize the faces of the people sitting in here and they see what they've missed out on. And knowing this, how can we go about from day to day without sharing the beautiful message of hope, of the gospel that we've been given? The young people that you've heard sharing their stories today have been actively involved with sharing their faith over the past few days. And um, we're going to close out with sharing just how God used them and how he's willing to use you to work in this community. 
Um, at that point, they're going to appeal to you to join them in service to Christ. And so, Valerie, if you uh, don't mind coming forward. Um, this week, we spent some time at a women and children's shelter uh, for re recovering addicts. And there were a number of experiences that we had. And we want to close our time with you by sharing the great need that exists in our community and, um, and God's desire for each and every one of us to get involved with sharing our faith. Uh, you know, a lot of the struggles that we've been through as a group in our lives, we found answers and our relationship with God deepened as we spent time serving others. And we want to close with inviting you to do the same. And so... Um, okay, so hi, happy Sabbath, my name is Valerie. Um, uh, I just wanted to start by saying, um, he didn't say it this time, but um, when we got to the women's shelter on Monday, when we went, uh, they, the people that were guiding us through the whole shelter actually told us that we were the second people to come in a year? Eight oh, in eight months, sorry. In eight months, we were just we were the second group that had gone to visit them. So in eight in eight whole months, only one other group had gone. So just to put that out there, we need to go to visit the women's shelter more or other places more. But um, anyway, um, so when I w while we were there at the women's shelter on Monday, um, one person that uh, stood out to me in particular was this woman that was like six months pregnant. And she was there among all the women and children and fathers. Um, so uh, Haley, uh, Chris, and I, we went outside. We volunteered to go outside and pull out weeds um, to make their volleyball, volleyball court look a little better. Um, and so where we were, there was also a place where the people could come outside to smoke. And um, so before, uh, so like we were outside and we were pulling weeds, which is very hard work at like two o'clock in the afternoon with the sun overhead. Um, and um, she came out, the woman, the woman that was pregnant came out and she sat down and she started to smoke. And um, I, it kind of came out of shock for me because I was like, oh, why? That's so sad. Like you're pregnant and you're smoking. I just, I thought it was sad. It hurt me. And so while um, Haley and I went to, we we're going to go inside to get a cup, uh, get a drink because we were thirsty. And so as we were walking by, we just looked at her. We didn't look at her like accusing me or anything. We just looked at her and just kept walking. And um, she, she saw us looking at her, like just when we looked at her real quick. And she said, yeah, I know I'm smoking and I'm pregnant. I shouldn't be doing that. And I know it's wrong. And, we're, and she said, promise me you'll never, you'll never smoke. So we said, okay, we, we won't. Um, and then um, we were walking off a little bit, and then but she said something else. She said, I'm trying to stop. And so we both turned around, and I remember we both said, um, okay, you got this. Um, um, you can do it. So we just gave her a little bit of encouragement, and we walked off. But as we were walking off, we just, I just, I guess, I kind of look, I kind of turned back to look back, and um, she, she was just kind of sitting there and just looking at her cigarette. So I really hope that we were able to get through to her, that she can be able to like, encourage her to stop smoking. But um, yeah, that was one of the, that was an experience that I, um, that stood out to me there at the women's shelter. Um, it was a little sad, but um, it also teaches me that, um, it helps me, it helps remind me to stay, what things to stay away from and not what paths not to go down. So. There's so many other stories. I encourage you to, to connect with our young people during our, our potluck time. Uh, there was a young uh, gentleman who was in the shelter as well with his, with his daughters, three daughters, and he pulled us over to the side and he had a heart to heart with the men in the group. And it was such a touching moment uh, but one thing that he said, I don't think any of us will forget. He said, my new addiction are my girls. 
my new addiction are my kids. And, you know, as we spend time in service to others, uh, for God, we're blessed. Amen? Yes. Amen. At this time, we're going to close with our three young people who uh, will be sharing the final appeal for us as we uh, listen to a special music. Um, I just want to say and appeal to you guys to definitely give your life um, over to Christ and um, commit fully. Because I know before where I was before, uh, very argumentative and depressed and suicidal and um, defensive and just really deeply hurt person from what I went through before I gave my life over to Christ. And after I committed, I felt total peace and um, love and care from him. So it's amazing what the power of love and Christ can do. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. <laughs> well, it's like 12, so it's not morning anymore, but... How many of you guys feel like you are committed to God at this moment? Uh, that's a good number. <laughs> um, I wasn't really like that before TBA. I was like, I was Christian. I went to church, and but I didn't really feel anything. It was more like, oh, I'm here because I guess my mom told me to. But then during this TBA, it really changed me. I met people and. I just hope that you will also have this same, similar experience where you can change and commit your life to God. Um, uh, good evening and uh, happy Sabbath. Um, my name is Roland. I live in San Francisco and um, this kind of short testimony. Um, I've uh, I've made a lot of bad decisions in my life, and uh, I was affected negatively by um, by the choices of other people and a lot of my choices. Um, I found that uh, a lot of the time it was uh, the problem was me wanting the I really wanted people to like me, and that was a huge problem. Um, but yeah, apparently. I remember uh, last time I said this, um, I told them a really long testimony. I almost cried, but hopefully I don't do that right now because uh, you won't understand anything I say. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I was pretty much obsessed with what people thought about me, and that was terrible. Um, but coming, coming to TBA, uh, I realized that there are people out there who, who like me for who I am, and um, they share their, their experience with, with me too, and uh, that's really amazing. Um, first, when uh, my mom told me that I was going to TBA, uh, I was kind of—I didn't really want her to waste waste her money on me because I didn't—I knew I wasn't going to change, but uh, I was wrong. Uh, TBA is actually was actually a really good experience for me and uh, made me realize that no amount of money is uh, equal to uh, a life for Jesus Christ. Um, and, uh, thank you. As Haley plays the last uh, song for us, we just want to invite you uh, to do something that we've done for the past three weeks at TBA. Uh, every morning, we separate for personal time with God, and each person finds their own little spot, and they spend time in prayer or reading their Bible. Uh, this morning, we're not going to separate, but um, we want to just, as she plays, invite you to pray and ask God to, um, to reveal, communicate to you whatever he needs to. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for everything that you do for us, everything that you're going to do for us, and we thank you for your great love. And as we close this service together, we pray that you will continue to fill our hearts um, with, your, with your love and guide us. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen.